Hi VC, it's Lou. I'm back with a Vinyl Finds video. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, everyone who's uh, subscribed and made comments on my channel. Um, today's uh, video is uh, Vinyl Finds from a recent trip to uh, a local record store, some used uh, records, and also um, some online purchases of new vinyl that I hadn't shown in previous um, in previous videos, okay? So first, uh, used vinyl from the record store. This is Robin Trower, Bridge of Size. Um, as you know, I've been showing some Robin Trower lately. Uh, a little late coming to the party, but um, I've heard good things about this album. I think uh, Lisa mentioned um, this is a really good Robin Trower album, and I've read some some good stuff as well. Uh, first couple of listens to this and uh, all of that is right. It's uh, fantastic uh, sounding and probably his, um, I think it's his first solo album or maybe his second solo album. Um, but this is definitely a classic for sure. Then we have another uh, legendary guitarist. Jeff Beck and the album Beck Ola from the Jeff Beck group. Um, the best thing that I can say about this album is that it's sort of Led Zeppelin-esque and that's not a put down to this group. Um, there, there is some, uh, some riffing on here and some rhythm that does remind me of Led Zeppelin. Um, I think Ron Wood, Ronnie Wood plays some amazing bass on here. Uh, Nicky Hopkins on piano. Um, I'm not familiar with the drummer Tony Newman, maybe uh, if those of you know who he is. Um, and of course Jeff Beck's amazing. The, where I would say um, this album is not as good as, as Led Zeppelin is, I mean Rod Stewart is, is an amazing vocalist, but uh, to me he's not on the level of Robert Plant. And the composition of the songs. There's a lot of covers on here. Uh, Led Zeppelin was just were just simply a better group at composing uh, material um, and John Bonham to uh, I think out drums Tony Newman. Uh, but this is an excellent album and it, it is it does remind me of Led Zeppelin in spots. I think Jeff Beck's best albums were still yet to come when he started to get more into the jazz fusion stuff with Blow by Blow and Wired. Um, I prefer those two albums, but this album and the Truth album uh, are very similar sounding and they're uh, very worthwhile pickups. We then have Donovan's Greatest Hits. So this is some good uh, psychedelic folk. Uh, I'm not a big Donovan fan. I recently picked up at a flea market the Mellow Yellow uh, album for two bucks like that. Um, saw this for 10 and thought, you know what, this is probably um, all the Donovan that I need in, in my collection. And the last of the used ones, uh, one a favorite art artist of mine that I've been listening to lately, John Mayle. Um, I had recently shown some albums like The Turning Point and the Jazz Blues Fusion live records, which I absolutely love. Uh, as well as uh, some CDs from the Blues Breakers, um, the Blues Breakers with Eric Clapton and The Hard Road with Peter Green. Those are our fantastic albums. Uh, I was really looking forward to uh, checking this album out because I was unfamiliar with it, but this is a disappointment. Uh, this album, as it turns out, is from around 1979, and uh, it's probably John Mayle's least blues album. Um, so even though it didn't have blues, I thought, okay, maybe still the songs will, will be good, but it's, it is not, for maybe, except two or three songs that are pretty good songs, um, this is a big disappointment, big letdown. There's even a couple songs where John Mayle doesn't do the lead vocal, and those are the absolute worst songs on here. Um, it's got, it's got some funky sounds, but not funk in a, in a good way. Uh, it's, it's some... I don't know, blandish type material that, um, again, I wasn't familiar with this. Had I known, then I would have probably not picked it up. Now to some online purchases. The first one 
is the Moody Blues Live at the Isle of Wight. This is from 1970. This is a gatefold. Double LP. Uh, I'm a big Moody Blues fan, especially the first five albums. And this is uh, right at the time of the fifth album. Um, great performance by the Moody's uh, at this show. Unfortunately, I don't think the recording is the greatest. Um, I have another Isle of Wight um, live album from The Who, and that one is recorded much better than this one. Um, but this is good to have given that it encompasses my favorite uh, era of the Moody Blues. The next one, which I haven't opened up, but I've, I've heard some of the songs going into it. I'm a big uh, My Morning Jacket fan, and this album is by their leader, Jim James. This is uh, his second solo album. This is called Eternally Even. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I think this album's better than his first solo album, but, uh, and while uh, I, I enjoy, I've enjoyed the songs that I've heard so far, and I think I will enjoy this album, um, I will be honest and say that I don't think it's at the level of the My Morning Jacket albums. Uh, the last two albums by My Morning Jacket I really enjoyed. Um, and certainly, I like the way he changes things up on the uh, solo projects. It's a little bit more uh, atmospheric, a little bit more keyboard than guitar, uh, a little bit more soulful. Uh, and that's all great. And these, again, these are great albums. Uh, again, I think I just prefer the My Morning Jacket ones a little bit more. Eternally Even, Jim James. The next one is a jazz classic. Charles Mingus, Mingus uh -um. um This, again, uh, this is something that if you're a jazz fan, you should be familiar with. Uh, you need in your collection. Uh, it's kind of like Miles Davis, you need kind of blue in your collection in some kind of format. Um, I'm familiar with this album. I had the CD for a long time and just recently decided to get um, get the vinyl. And uh, again, and one of my probably top five jazz, um, favorite jazz artists, Charles Mingus. And the last record, again, what I consider to be another classic. Uh, the MC5, back in the USA. Uh, I think everybody knows the Kick Out the Jams debut album, live album, um, which is considered by many a, to be a classic. This is the second, uh, their second album, first studio album, uh, a little bit lesser known, uh, obviously, than Kick Out the Jams, but still an unbelievable record. The MC5 only made three albums. Uh, Higher Time was the third one. Uh, and all of them are worthwhile to get. So if you're a fan of uh, the MC5 um, and sort of that powerful, maybe early punk rock kind of sound, um, I think uh, the MC coming out of Detroit, the MC5 and the Stooges were pioneering that sound. Um, this is an excellent album to get. There's a great cover version of Tutti Frutti on here, which 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 I love. So. That's it. Um, thanks for watching. And again, feel free to comment and subscribe. Thank you very much.